Today, we're going to talk about simulation versus specificity in training. And if you know anything about the principles of training, you'll know that one of the key principles to successfully running a training program is training specifically for your sport. There's a bit of a continuum on how we can engage with exercise. And, and at the far side of the continuum, we might have just exercising, where going for a walk or playing badminton or playing golf gets you some exercise, helps you become somewhat physically more prepared for life, and might positively affect your ability to participate in a sport that you haven't done a whole lot of. When we do get good at a sport and when we do get interested in improving at that sport, we need to start getting more and more specific with the training that we do. And so usually where our athletes start is with what we would call general training or in sports science, they call it general physical preparation. And that's things like going rock climbing, lifting weights, doing some exercise that will generally make you a stronger athlete with a greater capacity. Above general training on our hierarchy would be specific training and general training lays the foundation for specific training and specific training it can only go so far when you don't have a good general base. Specific training is what we see most climbers doing, trying to get their fingers strong on a hangboard, trying to get good at pull-ups, lock-offs, trying to get good at climbing on a 45 degree wall. All of those things start leading us to the ability to perform well on rock. Really popular mode of training these days is simulation. Go and build a replica of the project that you're doing and just work that replica until you're able to go out and do the project. The problem with simulation is that it's very, very narrow in its focus and you go real deep into some very specific moves. It doesn't give you the breadth that you need out of specificity. And so it's really important for most climbers to train specifically, but not worry too much about the simulation. When we look at specificity, there are two major components to it. And one of them is motor specificity, being able to use the same limbs, the same movement patterns, and maybe even the same angles that we would use in climbing on our project. The other part of this is metabolic specificity. Metabolic specificity is using the same energy systems, the same intensity and duration of activity. A great example of this is that bouldering is motor specific to rock climbing, but it is not metabolic specific to rock climbing. The durations are shorter, it's probably a little bit more intense, and so even though we're doing the same movements, we're not fully preparing for rock there, and we know that. Those of us that have bouldered to get ready for route climbing, you go to the crag and you're like, wow, I have absolutely no endurance. What we really wanna do is marry those two things together, get more motor specific, more metabolic specific, and then eventually bring those up into a performance peak. In the early season, a long way from your planned performance peak, you wanna do as much general training as possible. We wanna build a big base so our capacity is high, so our strength is high, so we're strong on all kinds of general finger positions. And then we can transition into more specific stuff the closer and closer we get to a performance phase such as a competition season, a specific trip, or a really good season at the crag. We get into specificity during that time. And then if we have bad conditions, if we live a long way from the crag, um, or if there's some other thing like schedule that keeps us from getting on our project regularly, that's the place for a simulation, to build a simulation of a specific move so that you can regularly engage with it. And when you go back to the rock, you're gonna be able to perform a little bit better. And then once you've had your performance phase, that's a time that you could go back to just general exercise. Go into a mountain biking trip or a ski trip after you're done trying to perform your best on the rock. If you're going to set a simulation, it's really important that you pay attention to the details. You wanna make sure that the angle of the wall is right, the hold sizes are as close as possible, the angle 
of the holds on the wall are as close as possible. The distances between the holds are as close as possible because if you do it even slightly wrong, you're going to train incorrectly. And we've seen those stories where, where people have blown it just a little bit and they made their simulation a little too easy. They went to the problem and they couldn't do it. And so when you wanna do those, you need to be very, very careful. You need to take lots of pictures, do good measurements, all kinds of real detail work. And then when it comes time to climb on the simulation, you need to do it with a reasonable amount of rest and recovery between. You don't wanna just project this thing because when we start simulating, we end up losing a lot of capacity. We end up losing a lot of movement breadth that we would get if we were doing just a bunch of general boulder problems. And so simulations, although very, very useful, they're almost a superpower. They only develop you in one very, very specific mode. And you've probably seen this. If you've been working just one project and you finally send your project at the crag and then you go to the one next door and it feels like you haven't been climbing all season because you've developed only this very, very targeted fitness. And that can happen really easily. All of this leads us to this overall picture that we need to have seasonality in our training. Climbers that are constantly performing are constantly underperforming. If you have these big ups and downs in your volume you spend at the crag, the hard routes that you do during only certain parts of the year, all of this stuff is gonna to lead to a more fulfilling and more successful climbing career for you. And when we think about our training, we start building things out, we do need to think, when I'm not very fit and I'm not feeling really great, general training is where I wanna start. As I get closer to performance, I want to go into specific training. If there are some specific parameters that I need to address, but I'm not able to get on a project, simulations might be a key. And then once I send or spend a good part of the season trying to send, I can go back to this general activity for a little while while I kind of reset for the next season.